I'm currently driving a car that is rewriting the Australian motoring history books. But for us car nuts, it's not in a good way. This is build number one of the last 500 ever to be made GT Falcons. It will also be the fastest GT Falcon ever produced. But how does it stack up against the most legendary of all GT Falcons, the XY? Thanks to Aussie know-how, the XY GT became a legend. The GT HO Phase 3 absolutely stuck it to the Yanks and Europeans and became the fastest four-door sedan in the world. Back home, it won Bathurst in 71, and now collectors are paying six-figure sums for a mint condition example. In the same vein, the latest FG GTF model has been a sellout success, with punters paying well over its almost 80 grand retail price. This one recently sold at auction for just over 157,000, while the very last build number 500 went for 236,000. The XY GT has a 5.8 litre normally aspirated V8 that was good for around 224 kilowatts and in the HO phase 3 spec as much as 283 kilowatts. In standard form the XY rode on 14 inch steel rims. This car here is fitted with the optional 15 inch Bathurst globes. The front brakes are small discs with caliper and the rears are drums. The FG GTF rides on staggered 19 inch wheels, has four piston rear brakes, six piston fronts with the front disc size being the same as the original's XY road wheel. So let's see how the GT has evolved over time and whether the latest and the last one ever lives up to the legend of the famed badge. Inside the limited edition GTF, it's a pretty familiar place. There's not much different at all, to be honest, to distinguish it from any of the other FG GTs. There's the stitching in the seat that lets you know it's a GTF, and in the multi-display screen at the front here, there's now a G-force meter. As for how it drives and steers, well, it's pretty much the same thing really. The car has the previous R-Spec GT suspension through it, so it feels exactly like that. It has stiffer springs, bigger sway bars, so it definitely handles better, and with the wider rear tyres, puts the power down to the ground a lot easier. But when you put your foot down, you can tell it's got a little bit of extra oomph. 351 kilowatts. And of course, that pays homage to the classic 351 cubic inch engine that graced so many GTs before this. Build number one is a six speed manual, and as before, it uses the same gearbox. So it's a little bit notchy, it's very direct, and it does the job. But the best part is the sound. Oh, yeah. Now, for a step back in time, Let's see what makes the XY GT such an icon. All right, well, the first thing you notice when you get in the old XY is the lack of safety equipment. I think we become so accustomed to it with new cars. There's, there's not even any headrests. Uh, you know, a collapsible steering column, that was obviously a big deal in 71. But the only forms of traction control, stability control, or ABS is my size 10 right foot. The other thing is the, the wind noise through the door seals and the windows and everything. There's a lot of that. The steering's very hard. There's no power steering. It's got a bit of play in it. You sort of have to keep winding it on in the corners. The brake pedal's very wooden and low. And the gear shift, well, the old top loader, it's, it's direct, but it's got a bit of movement in it. It's, um, kind of like a screwdriver in a bucket of nuts and bolts. It's just one of those cars you really have to grab by the scruff of the neck and drive it. And you know what? I love it. Now, the layout in the dash is obviously very different. And one thing I do like about it is 
back in that day, they had a gauge for everything. There's a temperature gauge, there's an oil pressure gauge, an amps gauge, stuff that's missing from most new cars these days. There's a taco that's, I don't know how accurate she is these days. And the steering wheel is so thin, but it's so cool at the same time. But there's definitely no G-force meter in this one. The other fantastic thing is watching that legendary shaker just literally shake around under the bonnet there. And as for the noise, <laughs> you cannot beat that. Now there's one thing the GT has built its reputation on, and that's pinning your head back under acceleration with all that V8 grunt. As we mentioned before, the XY was the fastest sedan in the world back in the 70s and was good for a low 14 second quarter mile pass. 40 odd years later, Ford reckons the GTF can do the same in the mid 12 second bracket, making it the fastest car it has ever built in Australia. So let's see if it's true. Well, the XY is certainly no slouch, even after all these years. But the GTF is obviously a quicker piece of kit. But no matter what, it's sad to know that this is the last brand new GT Falcon that I, or any car enthusiast, will ever get to drive. Well, there's no doubt that XY has earned its stripes, and it is a legendary muscle car in anybody's eyes. As for the GTF, well, it hasn't proved itself yet, and only time will tell if it goes down in the history books as a legend.